Impossible is a word that we use more often than needed, almost at the drop of a hat, without ever realizing that impossible actually reads, I am possible. My guest in this segment is an individual who always read impossible as I am possible, Elena Kinane, founder of Greenheart Organic Farms. Lush green farms right in the middle of the scorching desert. Fresh, delicious and nutritious farm produce, freshly harvested and delivered to your home. The brainchild behind this seemingly impossible feat, master farmer Elena Kinane, whose passion for leading a healthy and eco-friendly lifestyle has led to this green oasis in the middle of a desert. What started off as a small venture to cater family and friends has now bloomed into a full-scale business. So how did your journey into the organic world start? This is something that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. um, my mother is from Germany, mm -hmm. so in Bavaria we've always had a great tradition of um, healthy lifestyle, composting. Mm -hmm. My grandmother and my grand aunt, they managed this huge vegetable patch in okay. the back of our house. In Germany? In Germany, yes. Mm -hmm. So we grew everything, we had loads of fruit trees, we made compost. Oh. I have always believed that this is the best way to be, you mm -hmm. know, to make your own food because you know exactly what goes into it mm -hmm. and it's fresh. And they both lived till a very, very old age. Mm -hmm. So you pretty much grew up with the culture of having yes. clean food. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and it's a really a very big part of, and you know, to to see you plant seeds and you see the food come and yeah, grow. And it's and magic. It's magic, it yes. is. And it's amazing to harvest it, prepare your meal and then keep the seeds and you know, see the whole cycle right mm -hmm. in front of you. So I started out on my balcony, you mm -hmm. know, and tried to experiment and bringing in seeds from home. And um, yeah, it kind of just developed from there really. <laughs> What I find interesting in your story and why I really wanted to have you on the show is that uh, we live in a desert and mm -hmm. you thought that you could grow organic vegetables here. It's a very revolutionizing idea. It really <laughs> is. Honestly, to begin with, we didn't know if it would be possible. Because mm -hmm. growing on your balcony and in your garden is one thing, but then growing larger scale exactly. is a completely different story. And. Um, you need more water. The water is not coming from the tap. Mm -hmm. You know, the water is coming from wells that we dig. Right. So you need to have, you need to be away from the sea first of all. If you're close to the sea, you um, have the soil is just too salty. The sand is too salty. Salty, yeah. So which is too alkaline and you mm -hmm. can't grow. Um, unless you use chemicals. If you use mm -hmm. chemicals, no problem, but mm -hmm. that's exactly what we're trying to avoid. Correct. So we dig for wells. Mm -hmm. um, so the farm that we are on, we have a number of different wells and okay. on different levels. Mm -hmm. The major important thing that we do as well is we build soil. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what every organic farm should really do if you're in the desert or in, in a really fertile area, because even if you have great soil, if you don't continuously work with it right. and build the soil, uh, build it up again, then your soil will be depleted of nutrients. Mm. So what we have at the farm is we have loads of goats mm -hmm. and chickens and okay. some cows. Okay. And we only have the animals, we don't slaughter them. Mm -hmm. We have the animals for the production of manure. The whole process for the, the compost to be ready takes about six months. Wow. So it's a lot of work. And this is when we first started five years ago. Mm -hmm. We only had a few patches. No, it was very small. Another really important aspect is what we've learned is to um, grow from heirloom seeds. Mm -hmm. So this is seeds, they've been around prior to 1952. Okay. 1952 was the year when all the mass-produced industrialized seeds came on the market. Really? Yeah, so okay. these are engineered mm -hmm. seeds. The main characteristics of those seeds is that when you, for instance, you have an organic, when you have a tomato, mm -hmm. you take the seed and you will try to grow it again, right. but you will not be able to do that um, it, because the, the seed is sterile. Mm -hmm. So what is really important is to have your own seeds. So, so how do you get them? For fruit vegetables, it's really easy. Mm -hmm. You, um, for instance, the courgettes, the cucumbers, the tomatoes, the seeds are inside the mm -hmm. fruit. That's why they're fruit vegetables. And all you need to do is you need to choose the right varieties that do well in the desert climate. It's a, it takes a little bit of experience. Mm -hmm. First, we plant them into little trays. 
see which ones are doing well and then we outplant them into the field. Okay. But for the greens, um, it's more difficult. Okay. Because you need to flower. So beetroot, for instance. Takes longer. Exactly. Any root vegetables, any greens, you, you, you have to wait for them to flower. And then you collect the seeds from the flower. So that's a lot more tricky. <laughs> Five years down the line, what are the vegetables and fruits uh, Green Heart is growing? We have, at the moment, we grow about 125 different types wow. of, of produce. Mm -hmm. And the majority is vegetables, herbs, mm -hmm. and some fruit. So we are focusing mostly on what is feasible. Mm -hmm. And what are those? So we have melons, mm -hmm. watermelons, cantaloupe melons in season, and we do strawberries. Okay. So we've had really great results. We grow six different types of heirloom kale, for instance. Wow. So there's not just the curly kale. You know when you go and buy yeah. kale in the supermarket, it's hard, hard and tough yeah. and it's been sprayed mm. because it has traveled for long periods exactly. of time. Exactly, you don't know how they've been stored. And exactly, it's, and it's, yeah. it's almost hurting your throat when yeah, you yeah. swallow them because they're so hard. And so difficult to make kids eat that. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. But our kale is lovely and soft mm. and sweet and we have loads of different varieties. Um, and it's exciting to see mm. these old-fashioned varieties mm. and people say, oh really, this is kale? I never knew that kale could look like that. Mm. And we have a chart which is called rhubarb chart okay. and it's got a bright pink stem and it's an heirloom variety called, by the name of Pink Passion. Mm -hmm. So it's really, people are really excited to say, well, what is it exactly? Right, so we explain yeah. it as a chart and it's so full of nutrients because you have the benefits of the green vegetable, mm. but then you also have the red pigments. And um, yeah, so we grow spinach, we grow loads of different types of lettuce, mm -hmm. um, herbs, and um, then we grow a lot of different types of root vegetables, mm -hmm. beetroot, loads of types of carrots. Mm -hmm. Purple haze is mm -hmm. a, an amazing heirloom carrot mm -hmm. and it's very similar to the first original carrot that were actually grown in Afghanistan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where the carrot That's comes right. from mm -hmm. and it actually flowers very quickly also. Mm -hmm. And you can see the more modern carrots, they have only a few greens on, on right. the top. On the top, yes. But, but those these, purple yeah. haze, they have these huge Green shoots, size. yes. Yeah. And that's the I, first thing I buy when I'm traveling to Europe. Yeah. You know, because you see and you go in the supermarkets and the organic section, yeah. you see these beautiful Full. carrots with huge green yeah. leaves. Yeah. But see here, people don't want to grow them because they mm. see the leaves as a waste. Mm. And in a sense, you have to agree with that, but if you don't want to collect the seeds, mm. see for us, the, the, they will flower very quickly. So we can collect the seeds much faster. So in the last season, we collected so many seeds for this carrot. We can grow them all this year. That's we don't amazing. have to go and get the seeds from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Whereas the more modern varieties, the or, um, yellow ones and orange ones, it's very difficult to mm -hmm. get the seeds. It's very difficult. Very difficult. Mm -hmm. I love vegetables. Mm -hmm. I love to cook with organic vegetables and it just gives you a different kind of joy when you have fresh organic vegetables mm -hmm. and you can just cook so many different things with yeah. it. So it's great to see that we are having options right now in this mm -hmm. city where one can go and buy mm -hmm. and experiment with it. Mm -hmm. um, so how can one get to Green Heart? How can they uh, start sourcing organic vegetables for themselves and their families and live a healthy life? We have a farm shop mm -hmm. because of our desert setting. The farm shop is not on the farm itself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's in Dubai. It's uh, close in an area called Arjan, okay. which is close to Arabian ranches. Right. And obviously, we, we for organic vegetables, you can't really afford a mall setting because mm. the rent is just too, yeah, expensive. too expensive. You know, the profit margins are very low. Yeah. So it's a farm shop and we have the prices are very affordable. Mm -hmm. And what you pay for is the product. Mm. You're not paying for the overhead, you pay for the product, and the product is freshly picked every morning. What that you're you paying get. for is health. Absolutely. Yeah. And unfortunately, how how modern capitalism works is that farmers these days have mm. to produce high yields exactly. to survive. Food politics. Yeah, because it all goes by a third party trader True. who make the money. It's not the farmers that make the money, it's the third party. Mm -hmm. So we've really been strict about this. We don't want to deal with third party mm -hmm. traders. We want to sell directly to the end consumer. <laughs> You 
know, a very important question that I would like to know and even I'm sure a lot of my viewers mm -hmm. would like to know. How organic is organic and how do we figure it out? If you actually bought um, fresh produce that came with a label mm -hmm. and people had to list all the things that they've been sprayed with mm -hmm. and that they've been tampered, yeah. you wouldn't actually pick it up. Pick it up. You know? Pay for it and pick it up. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, you, you don't know. I think it's really important for organic farms to have a transparency policy. Absolutely. Contact the producer, uh, con the consumers, mm -hmm. and tell them this is what we do, this is what we don't do. So we get a lot of customers who come to us who has, have questions. Mm -hmm. What do you feed your chickens? How do you treat them? Mm -hmm. What seeds do you use? How do you fertilize? What do you do when you have a problem with pests? It's very important when you want people to become more aware, mm -hmm. invest their time and money into eating organic food for them to know what exactly goes behind the scene to make it organic. Very important and go and ask questions. Go and ask the shops that you buy from. Where is it from? How has it been grown? Um, you know, and, and get as much information as possible. Absolutely. Because, you know, if you achieve to grow genuine organic produce in the desert, if you can achieve that, you are happy to answer these questions. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're proud that you've managed to do it. Do it. You know, because it is really an achievement. <laughs>to yourself of course you mm -hmm. have a full family two kids husband mm -hmm. uh, and you're managing your business and the family life how do you balance and how organic are you as a family oh yeah, very <laughs> organic and uh, my husband sometimes rolls his eyes you know mm -hmm. but he's on board mm -hmm. he slowly but surely I've convinced him over the years and um, any salad, any smoothie, any of green juice I put in front of him, he will, he will you've done a good consume. Job. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my kids as well, they will they don't even like regular food. Mm -hmm. You know, if they go to someone's house and they get something that's they can feel the difference. They just, yeah. yeah, this processed food, mm -hmm. they just don't want to eat it, you know? And they look at the back and they go, Oh, yeah. you know, we don't eat that. Mm -hmm. They, are, they understand, you see, and you must never underestimate children. I think kids are uh, mm. really the best people to train their parents because once you really make them aware, they go home and they actually teach their parents. So they've seen it time I and again. I totally agree and I think that's the way to go, to be honest, mm -hmm. to explain children that they are the future Absolutely. and they will be the future decision makers. You can see that some of them are so enthusiastic about saving the planet and um, passionate about it. passionate about it you know and it's the, it's a, the right age to to get them excited and to get them out in the fields and to to experience to get them away from the ipods yeah, and exactly, you know um, exactly. get them get them beautiful into beautiful experience yes absolutely how can people find you online so that uh, it, you are just a click away yeah, we are, to get organic food on yeah, their table. We have a website, mm -hmm. um, www.greenheartuae.com. Mm -hmm. has online payment as well, mm -hmm. but you can also pay on delivery. Mm -hmm. And we have, the farm shop is really lovely. Mm -hmm. It's really worth coming because Come we've got there. loads of different things and it's got a complete different feel to any other shop in Dubai. You're doing a fantastic job of making UAE uh, more healthy. And I'm always excited to have people like you on the show to create more awareness. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having us and for all your support. It's really appreciated. Thank you.